Hello and welcome to this session in which we would look at accounting for derivative instruments specifically when it comes to speculation. In the prior session we looked at what are derivative instruments. If you're not sure what deriv derivative instruments are, please look at the prior recording. But we need to understand there are two purpose for derivative instruments. One is hedging, the second one is speculation. In this session we're going to be looking at speculation and obviously we will work on hedging later on. What is a speculation? Who who would use such instruments for speculation purposes? What's a speculator? Speculator, think of them as traders, gamblers, someone who might buy a financial instrument for a few hours, few days, then sell them to another party. Simply put, the purpose of their investment, in quote, the purpose of their purchase is to make a profit. Obviously, everyone wants to make a profit, whether you are buying the financial instrument for hedging or for speculation but the purpose here is that you don't have a position to hedge you don't have a position to protect you are not protecting a position you're not buying the derivative instrument because you own a stock and you want to protect the value of that stock or you want to protect the value of your foreign currency transaction or you want to buy oil in the future market for your business purpose the purpose why you would buy those financial instruments is strictly to make a profit from buying and selling not to protect the position and the reason i'm emphasizing this point is because when we talk about hedging when we discuss hedging hedging is totally different you are buying a financial instrument however the purpose of your purchase is to hedge a position to protect a position and there's another group of investors or people or companies that that get involved in what's said something called arbitrage or arbitrators. What they do is they find discrepancy in prices on various markets and they buy and sell the same price simultaneously to take advantage of the price spread. I'll give you a quick example. And the reason I'm mentioning arbitra arbitrators and speculators because in your textbook they might mention it and I don't want you to be confused. For example, let's assume you own a stock and uh, right now on the New York Stock Exchange, so in USA, the stock on the New York Stock Exchange is it's trading at 149.51. So you can sell it right now at 149.51. So what you would do is, and you know in Tokyo, you have an account in Japan, in Tokyo, and the same security you can buy at 149.50. What would you do? You would short, you would sell yours immediately at 149.51 and buy immediately the one at Tokyo for 149.50. Simply put, you made a penny. If you have thousands or millions of shares, multiply that penny by a lot. But the point is, there's a, a spread, there is a price differences between the two market. That should not happen, especially with technology today, or you would think so, right? Well, in the 80s, this used to happen more often. So it's, it's supposed to be less popular or much more popular. If you are interested more in this topic, what I suggest you do is pick up a book for Michael Lewis called Flash Boys, and he talks about how price this people taking advantage, not people, companies taking advantage, and, and people as well, investors, companies are people, taking advantage of those price discrepancy through algorithm and computer speed. What we're talking about here is the difference in 100 of a milliseconds. But again, it's beyond the scope of this uh, recording, but it's very interested. Now, how to account for derivative instrument for speculation purposes? Here, here's what's going to happen. We're going to report them at fair value. Well, what does that mean? If we have a gain, it's going to be considered an asset. If we're going to have a loss, it's going to be considered a liability. And we're going to recognize the gain or the loss in income or net income. Hedges, it's going to depend. It's going to mostly net income, but it's going to depend on the hedge. We'll talk about hedging later on. So simply put, there, there are two types of two types of derivative derivative instrument one for hedging and one for speculation for speculation it goes into net income we'll talk about hedging later on let's take a look at an example to illustrate the concept let's assume adam company purchases 1000 call option on january 2nd 20x4 to buy apple shares at 190 dollars Apple shares were trading at 175 on that date. The option expires on April 30th, 20x4. Adam paid $500 for this call option. Let's translate everything. What happened is this. Right now, Apple stock is trading at $175. What, what Adam did, Adam said, I'm going to buy the option. I want to buy 1,000 shares of Apple shares, but I don't, I don't, want, I don't want to buy them today because I don't have the money, for example, to buy uh, 100, uh, 1,000 shares. I will buy the option. 
and this option will give me will the option to buy them at one hundred and ninety dollars so hold on a second why would you buy the option to buy them at 190 if you can buy them for 175 today for one thing i don't have the money two i don't have to buy it today i have till april 30th so between now and april 30th i have time okay this is what i'm buying i am buying time this is what adam is buying now buying time in the hope that apple stock will be above 190 by april 30th if not Adam would lose all the $500. So let's start with the journal entry. Adam will debit an asset called the call option of $500 and they will credit cash $500. What would this option give Adam? The buy to buy, the right to buy Apple stock at 190 between now and April. Well, what did Adam really purchase for that $500? Well, as I told you, Adam purchased time. So when you pay for an option, the option price gives you two value, something we called the intrinsic value and something called the time value. Now we need to define what is intrinsic value and what is time value. Before we define intrinsic value and time value, I would like to remind you whether you are an accounting student or a CPA candidate to take a look at my website, farhatlectures.com. I don't replace your CPA review course, nor obviously I replace your accounting course. My motto is saving CPA candidate and accounting student one at a time. How? By providing you resources for your college courses, for your CPA examination. This is a partial list of all my accounting courses that have lectures, multiple choice, true, false. My CPA resources are aligned with your Becker, Roger, Wiley, and Gleam, so you can easily go back and forth between my material and your CPA review course. And on my website, I give you access to 1,500 previously released AI CPA exam questions in their original format plus detailed explanation. You really want to take a look at those before setting for the exam. If you have not connected with me on LinkedIn, please do so. Take a look at my LinkedIn recommendation. Like this recording. It helps me a lot. Share it with others. Connect with me on Instagram. I'm trying to grow my Instagram following, Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit. So what is intrinsic value? Well, intrinsic value is the difference between the market price and the preset strike price at any point in time. Well, let's take a look at what we have here. The market price of Apple is 175. The preset strike price is 190. Now you tell me, what is the intrinsic value of this option? Well, what does that mean? It means, what is the difference? If I exercise this option today, what profit do I make? And the reason is I don't make a profit. I'll be crazy to do that. I'll lose money because I can buy the stock at 175. Why would I pay an additional $15 for it. Therefore, at this point, there is no profit. We can say that the intrinsic value for this call option is zero. There is no intrinsic value. Okay, that's fine. So why did I pay $500? As I told you earlier, I paid for time. Time value is the value of the option other than the intrinsic value. What is that other value? Time. You are buying time. Okay, so the expectation, you're buying the possibility that the option goes above the strike price during the contract period. That's what you're buying. You're betting on the time. And through time, the price goes above 190. You make a profit every time the stock is above 190. Well, so the $500 is strictly paid for time. So bear in mind, very important, make a note of this. $500, this is the value of time. Now, the longer you want the contract, generally speaking, in the real world, the longer you want that contract to be. So if you want to say, I want this option to extend till June, end of June, well, you have to pay more because the more time, the more time you have, the, the higher is the price of the option and, and vice versa. If you want to buy an option till the end of January, it's going to be cheaper because you're not buying a lot of time. So if you want to buy time, you have to pay more, generally speaking. Now let's take a look at what's going to happen post January 1st. Remember we purchased the contract for $500 and the call and the strike price is 190. We can buy it at 190. Remember now we have an asset called call option. We have 500 there because it's an asset for now. March 31st we prepare our financial statements and here's what happened on March 31st. The market price of Apple is 200 and we're going to talk about the time value of the option is 150. Okay? So what does that mean? Well, that's good. That's really good. Why? Because I can buy this price for 190 and the price on March 31st is 200. So do I have intrinsic value? Now I do. How much is my intrinsic value? Well, the, this, the market is 200. My preset is 190. I have $10 of intrinsic value. 
So on March 31st, the intrinsic value of the call option is $10 per option. Remember, this is $10 per, per one option. How many options do I have? I have 10,000, so it's $10 times 1,000 options. I have a gain on the option contract of $10,000. I'm ready to book my gain. I'm going to debit. I'm going to increase an asset. I'm going to increase my call option, 10,000, and credit an unrealized holding gain loss that's going to go to income. So my call option now, notice what happened is, I added to my call option 10,000. That's a pretty good deal. So think about it. I only paid $500. Now technically I have a gain of 10,000. Now, this is the good news. The, the, the not so good news is as time goes by, my the value of my option, the time value goes down. Now I'm on March 30th. I still have one month to go in my time. The time value, remember the time value was 500. Now, the time value is only worth 150. Now, how do I know it's worth 150? Usually you can estimate or get an appraisal. They will tell you, for example, the time value of this option is worth such and such. So the time value of the option is 150. How did, how did you know? Again, you appraise it, you ask an expert. What's going to happen is, remember, the time value started at 500. Now it's worth 150. I have to reduce my call option by 350. I have to reduce my, because I lost time. As time goes by, by April 30th, by the end of April, the value of this contract, the time value equal to zero because I, I don't have any time. But now it's still worth something. It's only worth 150. Therefore, I reduce my call option by 150 and I record a loss of 350. So this is what happened. So time value goes down. As time goes down, time value goes down. Now I can, I can report my call option value on the balance sheet as 10,150. So notice I start, I invested $500. You see the power of options. Now it's worth 10,150 and that's, that's what goes on the balance sheet. Now, obviously without mentioning this, the 10,000 profit and the 350 loss, they will go, those two will go on the income statement. So the net of them, I don't know, 9,650, which what will go on the income statement. Let's keep going in time. On April 15th, right before, two weeks before the option expires, the market price of Apple dropped to 195. And the time value of the option becomes 50. Again, as time goes by, the time value of the option decreases. Now, Adam panics and guess what Adam did? Said, you know what? I'm gonna exercise my option. I'm gonna go ahead and buy the stock at 190 and sell it at 195 because it seems the, the stock price is dropping. I should have, you know, maybe Adam should have exercised the option on March 31st, but you don't know the future. So now we're gonna do that. So decided to exercise the option. So before we exercise the option, we bring the option up to date. Up to date means mark to market. What happened is this, the option now, what's my intrinsic value? It used to be 10, right? On the prior slide was 10 when the price was when the price was 200 it was equal to 10 now the price is 195 the intrinsic value equal to 5 so i have to write down my call option by 5000 okay write it down by 5000 and book a loss of 5000 notice options are very risky hopefully you see this so what happened is i'm going to reduce my call option by 5000 Okay, to bring my option up to date because I'm going to go ahead and exercise today. Now, I also have to write down my time value of the option. It was it was 150. Now it went down to 50. Well, I lost $100. Again, how do you know the time value? It will be given to you in the real world. You can ask an expert, an appraisal. Maybe there's a market for that. Therefore, you would write down your call option by additional 100 and take a loss. Take a loss of $100. So notice now you, you book losses on the income statement for 5,100. After all said and done, your call option is worth now $5,050. Now you are ready to exercise. Well, guess what? You'll get cash. You're going to sell it. You're going to sell the call option and you're going to get cash of $5,000. You're going to debit cash $5,000. The call, you have, you're going to have to remove the call option. You're going to remove the call option. Notice you're going to have to remove it to bring the call option down to zero. And remember, there are still $50 of time value. Now you're going to lose that time value as well. Now you would record this time value directly into the income statement as a loss. And this is how we settle the option. Simply put, what does that mean? All said and done. We made, we made, they made, they made a profit. They, Adam made a good profit on this call option. So let's see the overall net effect on the income statement by, by buying this option. First, 
we paid $500 for this option. This is basically negative. We paid $500. Well, we had an increase in the intrinsic value of 10,000, then a reduction in the time value of money of 350. By March 30th, our income was 9,650. April 15th, when we decided to exercise, the value went down. So we had a reduction in the intrinsic value of 5,000, a reduction in the time value of 100. Then on a April 15th, we lost the remaining $50 of time value. All in all, our net income is 4,500. Why? We had $5 in intrinsic value times 1,000 shares, that's $5,000 in intrinsic value profit, Plus, we had to pay a fee at the beginning of 500. Remember, we had to pay a fee of 500 to buy this option. So 5,000 minus 500 will give you 4,500. Not a bad deal. So you took $500, turn it into 4,500. I sound like I'm trying to get you into options. Don't do options. Options are very risky, but this is for accounting purposes. What should you do now? Go to my website, farhatlectures.com, and start to work multiple choice questions about the topic. If you're not a subscriber, subscribe, invest in yourself, invest in your career, get done with your CPA, get done with your accounting education so you could move on with your life and start to buy options. Options are great. You want options in life, all sorts of options. The best option is time. And that's the mo that's every day we are given the option of time. That's the good thing. But time goes by and you cannot really buy time. Don't waste any time. Study for your exam.